Hello and welcome to Jugglers on Juggling, Season Number 3, Episode 5. I am your host, Reese's 250, also known as Richard Coet, and this sounds very, very official. Today's episode, Conventions Part 2, and I hope you've noticed before I go too far in, my new awesome microphone setup. Hopefully this makes the audio quality not suck as much as Episode 4 it is, but did? What? Hopefully it works, we'll see what happens. I, let me just record. Conventions Part 2. Got four more questions for you guys that I'm going to answer that nobody posed any questions, so I had to come up with them for myself. So, number one, something that I don't think a lot of jugglers or lesser known jugglers ask of anyone, even themselves, until they're in the situation. How do I approach somebody that I've seen on YouTube or that's competed in the IJ or somebody or some famous juggler? Like, how do I approach Jason Garfield to talk to him and introduce myself? Why should he care who I am? How do I approach somebody like Albert Lucas or Sergey Ignatov Jr. or Thomas Dietz? How do I do that without appearing either an asshole or appearing to be an idiot? How do I do this? Simple. Remember this one simple fact. Everybody is a human being. Everyone is a single person. You can level with them as you would any other person. Nobody, nobody has an ego that big that they're like, I'm not even talking to you. No. Believe me, people will talk to you. The thing is, is that to avoid appearing like an idiot, you want to have something to talk about. And that's the thing. Is So either say you want to talk to Jason Garfield, for example. What do you know about Jason? Well, say he's just put on an episode of his latest podcast. You could go up to him and start the conversation by saying, hey, I liked your latest podcast, or I hated your latest podcast, and you, if, if you do say that, you have to say, and here's why, otherwise Jason will not like you instantly. But, you know, or you could say to somebody like Sergey, you could pose a question to him, uh, what's, what moves are you going to be doing at WJF5? Can you let me in on a little bit of info? You know, just think of something, some sort of opener, and it's not really that hard to do. But think of something to say, because obviously you either know them or have seen them, so use that. That's about all I can say about that. And remember, just level with them. They're a human being. They don't have a super ego the size of this room. Actually, this is a pretty small room, but you get my point. Basically, just be open with them. Just start a conversation and work it as if you were working somebody at the bar or talking to somebody on the streets or whatever. Just level with them. Be personable. Be human. You'll do fine. Second point. So the next major point about conventions is how much money should I bring with me? And this is tough for me to answer because I work in U.S. dollars as opposed to every one of my international viewers, which I'm not sure how many there are, but I know people do. Simple. It depends on how long the convention is. If you're going for a two-day convention like Philadelphia Jugglers Festival, or whether you're going for a full week-long convention like the IJA or the WJF. A general rule that I've come up with for myself is bring $50 a day, plus whatever money you need for a hotel. If you're not staying at a hotel, great! Beautiful. You don't need money for that. But $50 is usually enough for one day's worth of food and whatever random juggling supplies you want to buy, plus gas. That's about as much as you'll need. Sometimes you'll need more, and that's why I would always suggest, well, it'd be pretty stupid if you didn't, but bring your debit card, bring your credit card, and don't leave them anywhere else except in your pocket. Always have them on you because you never know when you're going to run out, but usually there's an ATM somewhere nearby. Now, it's very, very easy to get carried away when buying new juggling props at a convention. After all, the vendors are right there, you don't have to pay shipping, and you try out something and you go, ooh, I like this, buy, and then one week later you're sick of it. A lot like the toys of yesteryear. <laughs> Whatever. But... Basically, remember, I set a rule for myself is that I never buy props on the first day from the vendors. If it's a DVD that I've been willing to get and wanting to watch, buy it. By all means. But for 
anything like say there you've got a set like the first time I ever tried the PX3 Circus the, with the molded handles. I thought they were absolutely wonderful. I wanted to get a set right there when I first saw them at the WJF4. I really wanted to get them, but I stopped myself on the first day. And the second day and third day and fourth day, I went, are these really better than the Airflates I'm currently using? And I went, no. And I didn't buy them. I saved myself at least, you know, $90 by not buying a set of three PX3s. But, oh, and that reminds me, Penguin Juggling Props. They are awesome. But <laughs> besides that, generally hold off on buying things on day one. Wait until the second day, unless, of course, it's a short convention and the vendors aren't there on the second day. Hold off on any props that you want to buy till later, till you've had a chance to try them out more thoroughly and think it over. Because it's very easy to go, ooh, buy, and then you never touch it again. I've got a set of devil sticks that I hardly practice, I've got Diablo that I never use, and my boxes even are sitting there doing nothing in my room. Just hold off on yourself and wait. And that's enough for that point, so let's move on to the next one. So another stupid question that doesn't have a right answer is, how do I get somebody to start passing clubs with me? Unfortunately, unlike how do I approach somebody like Jason Garfield, this doesn't have a simple answer at all. In fact, I'm still trying to think of one. But all I know is that the wrong thing to do is go, Wanna pass? Especially when somebody's doing a trick, which is just bad etiquette. They'll be like, Wanna pass? I'm working on a five rank five up. Go away. Okay. Now, what you want to do is, same rules as when you're calling for a game of combat. Basically, Wait until the person that you want to pass clubs with is either not doing anything, has just finished doing something, or has just come out of a show and is looking for something to do. Nobody's going to stop doing whatever the hell they're trying to do just so that they can pass clubs with you. you know, unless, of course, it's Jason Garfield who asks, in which case they're like, yes, shh, drop whatever you're doing, grab your clubs and start passing. But... It's pretty easy to tag on to a group in progress, you know, unless, of course, it's a beginner's group when the person is trying to learn, but I digress. There you just go, can I jump in for a quick second? And they'll be like, sure, how do you want to do it? Uh, let's do simple feeding. I'll feed. And that's it. Ring passing is something that not a lot of people do, so you really got to pick and choose who you're asking about that, but I digress. Basically, just be polite. Wait until it's the proper time, then go for it. Don't be shy. Just say it. Don't go, willing to pass, because that's bad. But just like, hey, you want to pass some clubs? Not doing anything else right now. Be like, sure, why not? And that's how you generally will do it. So, next question. So, the last point I want to make today is about photographs and video. Is it okay for me to take a picture of whoever I want, whenever I want? Do I need to ask beforehand? And is it legal? To answer the last question in a simple sentence, unless they say no, yes. <laughs> it sounds kind of stupid, but it's true. Unless something happens like at the WJF, where you have to sign a form to get in, or it says it at the entranceway to the convention center that there are no photographs allowed, it is perfectly all right and perfectly legal for you to take pictures of the convention whenever you want. Say, for instance, Cornell and the public show, however, you know, they may do that where they won't let you photo or video the public show unless you have permission. In which case, get permission if you want, but that's a whole different issue. The issue is, is it proper etiquette I think is the right word, to basically just take a picture of somebody and then post it online from a juggling convention. Yes, it's perfectly fine. The juggling community is one of the most accepting and liberal communities or subcultures out there. Really, we don't have a problem with anything. We're used to our pictures being posted online. We're all attention whores anyways. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it's in a room full of jugglers, every single person is an attention whore. They don't mind. If they see a photo pop up with them online, sure, why not? The worst thing that happens is they get taken down. 
There are some out there that if you will suddenly use your photos for money, however, that's bad. You never want to do that. I some I had something happen with that with my uh, Cafe Press store recently, and I had to take a shirt down. But for the most part, it's perfectly fine unless you're selling the photos. It's perfectly all right to take a picture of whoever you want, whenever you want, and put it up online or do whatever the hell you want with it. Simple answer for a simple question to end the day. Video footage is the same way. Put whatever you want on YouTube. Nobody's going to care. In fact, nobody probably will care. Your view count is probably going to be in the sub hundreds. But that's another issue. And another episode is how do I get my view counts up on YouTube? So let me just end the episode by saying thank you for watching. And will I stop clicking the damn thing? Thank you for watching. My name is Richard Coet, also known as Rhesus2050. If you want to send me an email, do so. Jojfans at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at Reese's 2050 R-E-E-S-E-S-2150.com slash J-O-J. I've made a couple new episodes of the comic, if you haven't seen, so check those out when you get the chance. And otherwise, expect another mini-episode coming up within the next two weeks. Until then, I'll see you later. Good night.